Someone asked, are there any pets you regret getting or weren't prepared for? Hey, what's up you guys? My name's Tyler Ruggie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So for today's video, we are going to be doing a Q&A because I asked you guys some questions on Instagram and we are going to be answering them. But before we get into that, today's video is sponsored by My Right Bird. My Right Bird is a really fun quiz you can take online. It just asks you some very simple questions about your lifestyle and things that you would be looking for in a pet bird. And it will give you some options on birds that fit the criteria as far as how you answered your questions and it's a really cute and fun quiz to take even if you're not necessarily looking for a pet bird. It's really cute and it gives you some really fun facts and useful information about different types of birds. So if you guys want to check out the quiz just check out the link down in the description below. It's a really fun easy quiz to take and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun and it is fun so you should do it. So getting into the Q&A I'm joined here with Gypsy the African Grey and we are going to be answering your questions on Instagram. If you guys want me to answer your question in my next Q&A, make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram because that is usually where I get the questions from. So the very first question I got is how do you go about researching animals? So as you guys know, it's so important to research animals before you get them. In my opinion, what you want to avoid doing is getting all of your information from one source. So it's always important to go out to a lot of different sources and gather all the information you can so you can get all perspectives on the animal and its care because not everyone does things the same exact way and also not everyone has everything 100% right. So the first thing I do when I research an animal that I wanna get is I look up care guides online. I look up care sheets because it has all the information laid out for you right there on one page. It gives you some general insight on the animal and where it comes from. It also gives you kind of a general idea of the care requirements and what it needs. And it's not always good to just follow a care guide even though it has everything right there. It's not always 100% accurate and also there's usually more to the animal than what's just given in the care guide. So on top of care guides, I also like to go on forums because there are a ton of different forums online for different animals that you may be interested in getting. So there's parrot forums, there's uh, lizard forums, like even more specific, there's bearded dragon forums, there's like leopard gecko forums. There's rabbit forums, snake forums. There's like literally a forum for everything. Hedgehog forums. Any animal that you want, there is probably a forum for it. So I like to go on forums and read all about the animal on there and look at different questions people have asked on those forums about the animal because the type of people who join forums like that are usually people who are dedicated to the animal and have a lot of experience with them. Not only that, but you also get a lot of different perspectives from a lot of different people all in one place. So I really like to go on forums as well. And on top of that, this is kind of an obvious one, I think, because here we are. I like to go on YouTube and watch videos about those animals because there are usually people who take care of those animals and have experience with them that make videos on YouTube. And you can kind of actually see the animal in video format and actually get a visualization of how to take care of that animal. So I love YouTube for that reason as well. But like I said, make sure to kind of venture off and get information from as many different places as you can. If there's like a rescue for the animal, you can call a rescue and get information from people who work at the rescue because they usually have a lot of experience with said animal. Yeah, just reach out to as many people as you can and get as much information as you can from different sources because then you'll really get an idea for whatever the animal is that you want to take on. Oh, and also, if you are looking to get a pet bird, uh, My Right Bird is a really good starting point if you're looking into kind of getting a bird because there are a ton of different birds out there and My Right Bird just like asks you all the questions that need to be answered and then it gives you birds that fit your criteria and it's just a good starting point for figuring out what birds might be best for you and then you can take that and continue to do more and more research on that but my right bird is definitely a really good starting point and it's also a lot of fun and it's easy link down below <laughs> someone asked are there any pets you regret getting or weren't prepared for so to answer your question, no. I've always pretty much done my research and I've always known what I was taking on before I got it. And that's one of the reasons why it's so important to do your research about animals before you get it because it's the people who don't do enough research that end up getting a pet 
And then they find out a bunch of stuff that they had no clue about because they didn't do their re proper research. And then they end up getting rid of the animal and regretting it. So that's something you wanna avoid doing, obviously. And I personally have never gotten something and then just regretted it because I usually know what to expect. What is the best starter bird? So this is a good question because I get it a lot, which means that there are a lot of people who want to know what is the best bird for beginners? So to be completely honest, in my opinion, there aren't any such thing as a starter bird because that's just not really how birds work. All birds are very, very different in a lot of different ways, and there are different things you need to take into consideration when you're choosing a bird. Some things that differ from bird to bird are lifespan, handleability and temperament, the mess they make, how loud they are, their talking ability, their intelligence. All of these things are things that you need to take into consideration, and they differ from bird to bird. So there are a ton of different birds out there and you just need to figure out which one has the talking ability you want, has the lifespan you want. Because you're not gonna get a bird that's easy to take care of and then you're gonna take care of it for a couple years and be like, all right, this is easy. I'm ready to move on to intermediate bird. And then you get intermediate bird and then you are okay with it. So then you move on to advanced bird. That's just not how it works because I think all birds are easy and difficult to take care of in their own ways. It just depends what you find easy and what you find difficult because some people will get a bird and hate it because it screams so much or they'll get a bird and they'll hate it because it is so messy. But other people don't care if a bird screams all the time or other people might not care if a bird is messy. They might just be completely fine with it. So it just depends what you're looking for and what fits your lifestyle. And again, not to keep plugging My Right Bird, but it's a really good resource to use for that exact reason. It will ask you questions like, what kind of talking ability do you want in a bird? How much mess can you handle? How much like loudness can you handle? Stuff like that. And I'll ask you stuff about your lifestyle. If you have kids, just different things that you need to take into consideration when you're getting a bird. And then based on how you answer those questions, it tells you different birds that will fit the criteria that you're looking for. So that's why I love it. And I think it's an amazing starting point for someone who doesn't know a lot about birds. And also it's just really fun to take because like I've taken this quiz multiple times even though I'm not even looking to get another bird just because I like this quiz like genuinely. So again, just saying, use the link down below and check out My Right Bird. That's all I'm trying to say. The next question is, did you ever meet Cheese? So for anyone who doesn't know, my friend Taylor used to have a cowfish named Cheese and he was an amazing dude that I actually did get to meet uh, one time a long time ago, like a year ago, but I did get to meet him. God bless. I, I got to meet Cheese and that's all that matters. Did I vlog it? I think I did vlog it. Did I vlog meeting Cheese? I'm pretty sure I did. I'll link that if you want to see me meet Cheese. The vlog will be linked up here somewhere and you can click it and you can watch it because I did meet Cheese and it was a pivotal experience for me in my career. The next question is if you could go in the past and see any extinct animal, what would it be? I would love to see dinosaurs because when you think about it, that's just so cool because nobody has ever really seen a dinosaur before. Like nobody in our present time knows what a dinosaur looked like exactly. Most of it is just us guessing based off of skeletons and stuff but we have never actually like seen a live dinosaur before and that's just so crazy to me so i would love to see a dinosaur and like maybe like behind a cage or something i wouldn't want to be in direct contact with the dinosaur the next question is how do you get a stubborn bird to eat their veggies so this is a really good question because this is something that i had difficulty with mango back when i first got mango he did not like veggies or show very much interest in them and he was also just very picky there are a lot of different things you can do and things people say to kind of entice your bird to eat veggies and I will just give you one of these because there's again a lot of them and this is just the one that worked for me when I was trying to get mango to eat his veggies I would eat the vegetables I want him to eat in front of him so he would see me eating the vegetables and it would make him jealous and 
Also, it would kind of make him interested in the vegetables and he would want to try them. So I would eat some and then I would take some and give it to him. Make sure you're not giving your bird vegetables that were in your mouth because your saliva is dangerous to birds. It's not something that's ever occurred to me to actually try until I saw people suggest it online. That's just not something that you would normally think of, but it worked for me. That's how I got mango to eat things. Isn't that right, Gypsy? Next question is, are you a potato? The answer is yes. With all your animals, does your house smell? If so, how do you keep it down? My house does not smell at all. Like, it just doesn't smell bad. Or maybe it does smell bad and I just don't notice it. I don't know. But I do like to freshen up the air in my house and make it smell good, which can be difficult with birds because you can't burn candles or incense or anything like that. But I do have a video all about how to make air fresheners that are safe for birds. So if you guys wanna check that out, I'll link that down below. That's a video I did before with my birds cause they're bird safe air fresheners and it's such a good idea even if you don't have birds. It's a good idea on how to freshen up there in your house without candles or incense or essential oils. And the last question that I'm going to be answering today is what is the biggest snake that you are comfortable owning and I'm not really sure. Right now I have a red tail boa and she is pretty big. So I'm comfortable with owning her. And the reason why I got her was because I wanted to get more of a feel for larger snakes. So I would say at this point, I'd be comfortable owning something as big as like a male reticulated python because those don't get like super unmanageably big. But once you start getting into like female retics and bigger things like Burmese pythons and stuff, those are huge and I don't wanna deal with that. But like, you know, male retics or like dwarf retics, things like that, that get pretty big, but not humongous. In my opinion, not humongous at least. So basically I'm comfortable with like the smaller range of retics, but the really, really big ones I'm not comfortable with, especially because a lot of those bigger snakes, you just need to have other people around when you're handling them. And I don't always have other people around to be with me when I need to handle my snakes. So yeah, that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed today's Q&A. If you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Once again, follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you guys would like to be in the next Q&A. Also, don't forget to check out My Right Bird. Again, that will be linked down in the description below. And if you're new here, subscribe to my channel because I post videos every week. Also, don't forget to check out my social media and my vlog channel. Those will be linked down in the description below. And I will see you guys in my next video. And Gypsy pooped on the floor. All right, Gypsy, can you say goodbye? Say something. That works.